first minstrels in this country were black men, the slaves, trying to ease the hardships of their lives with the songs that they wrote and the stories that they made up. The curious thing was, white folks begun to put woolly hair on their heads and black makeup on their faces, pretending that they was darkies down on the plantation. Minstrel shows, they were called. They set a semicircle of chairs on stage, and the man in the middle was called Mr. Interlocutor. But the jokes were handled by the end men, Mr. Bones and Mr. Tambo. And they danced, and they sang coon songs, and told funny stories that showed the black man better off and happier in slavery. After the Civil War, black men like my papa wanted to get into the entertainment business. But the only place open to them was the minstrel stage. So, they sold themselves as the genuine article. And they put burnt cork on their black faces. And they imitated the white men who was imitating them. Seems like soon as I could carry a tambourine, me and my brother Rennie was strutting out front of the minstrel parade with our papa right behind. I was about 14 years old and mighty proud to be a part of the singing, dancing brown family. Michael's mistress. But for a man born a slave, that was really something. We couldn't have known that chilly Mississippi day in 1889 that our papa would die. And our world would never be the same. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight at 8 o'clock at Nancy's Theater, Carmichael's 100% covered Ethiopian minstrels will have the honor and privilege to entertain you. What's that? What's that? <laughs> well, it's the star of our show, Mr. Harry Brown Sr. You messed my chicken, you chicken thief. I know you paid for it. You took my thief. Mr. Bones, how are you feeling this evening? I exhaust, Mr. Interlocker. I exhaust. <laughs> Mr. Bones, what is this I hear about you going on a fishing trip? Well, you see, I done went and caught one of them big old fish. Let me see. What's the name of them? I suppose it was a whale you caught. No, it wasn't a whale I caught. I know it wasn't. Couldn't have been a whale, because I was using whale for bait. <laughs> Was your pappy ever a soldier, Mr. Bones? Yes, sir, Mr. Tambo. He was at the Battle of Bull Run. He was one of the ones who run. Now, the world-famous Mr. Rufus Washburn will do his celebrated clog dance with an assist from Mr. Tambo on the banjo and Mr. Bones on the boat.
there's another question I'd like to ask. Can you name the four seasons for me? Can I name the four seasons? If you can. The four seasons, let me see. The four seasons is pepper, salt, vinegar, and mustard. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tambo, I wonder if I can prevail upon you to favor us with a vocal rendition. Well, I don't know about that, Mr. Interlocutor, but I'd be mighty pleased to sing a song for y'all. <laughs> Although it ain't my color, I was feeling mighty blue. I got a lot of trouble. I tell it all to you. I suddenly disgusted with life, and that's a fact. Because my hair is woolly and because my color is black. I had my face enameled. I truly was a sight. Just as I was a thinking, I had things fixed up right. My gal came down to see me. I gave her such a fright. And that's why I must sing to you this mournful tune tonight. Mm -hmm. I wish my color would fade. I'd like a different shade Morning, night, and noon I'd rather be the man in the moon Than a coon, coon, Or get your people out there. If you don't feel so good, Mr. Carmichael, I don't think you'd better go on. What's the fussing all about? Just a little off my feet, and that's now, all. See that, boys? Your dad is a genuine trooper. Right? Not gonna Let's let a little green apple hole. tummy ache keep him off that stage. Mr. Harry Lucas. Come on, boys. And the sensational Brown family. And Mr. Tambo on the banjo. I saw the girl just in news just to beat the band With a bustle as big as a water bell and a hat that was really grand I said, oh honey, won't you come with me and be my little pet But the way she smiled so scoldingly I never will forget She was such a dandy, ha 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 Sweet as less as candy, ha 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 Oh, was she a dandy, ha 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 Papa's dead, Rennie. <laughs> He's dead.
get your man buried, Tess. But I just can't wait for you. We could join up with you in Pittsburgh. You see, Harry, the truth of it is, without your papa, the act isn't worth a whole lot to me. But I know every line of the Bones routine. Honest, my father, he taught me everything. Papa died for him, Harry. Don't you lick spit for him now. After Papa died, Mama decided to go back home. But I persuaded her to let me and Rennie try for a job with another minstrel show. And she was against it plenty. But I was determined to stay with this singing and dancing. As for Rennie, well, he never cared for blacking up or anything like that. But the music, he was always pulled by the music wherever he found it. Harry, I can feel it. My Rennie don't have no heart for the minstrels, and he don't have the heart for it either. But, Mama, at least if he's in the show with me, he'll be playing his own music. People will be hearing him play. And where else can he do that? Your father said to me over 20 years ago, and what did it get him but hard times in the early grade? Well, I'm going to be my own minstrel. Not Carmichael's. Not anybody. You believe that your father and his heart ever belonged to any other man, and you don't know what he was or what he wasn't. Mama, I didn't mean... Your father took pride in his work. Do you think so, Harry? Do I think so? Hell, we're going to be millionaires by spring. She was such a dandy. Ha, 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 ha. Dandy, dandy, We weren't millionaires by that spring, or the next, or even the next. We were always just a little broker and a little hungrier. Even the minstrels weren't all that interested in a pair of ragtag boys. Show for the folks. Harry, I don't think I want to be no minstrel star no more. It's the sweet life if we can grab it, ready. How Brown always said that. Ready, look. Things is always dark as fall the stone, Mr. Tambo. Oh, that's fine, Mr. Bones. But Steps and I are so hungry, uh, my tapeworms are screaming. <laughs> Look, you going back to the place and you wait for me here. Huh? You going to have yourself such a supper tonight, John D. Rockefeller wish he was invited. How you going to do that, Harry? 
Just leave it to your big brother. Come on. Ah, go here. Go here. Charlie Bates. What's your Harry. Harry Lucas Brown. Well, look at here, Mr. Harry Lucas Brown. I just happen to be a minstrel man myself passing through this here town. I'll be moving on to something more suited to my talents just as soon as I finish putting my new act together. The new act? Yes, sir. Been figuring on maybe fleshing up the routine a little bit with uh, some young, talented person that needs a break. You mean us? Well, I, uh, don't know that I need a harmonica player just now. This is my brother, Rennie, uh, Mr. Bates. We go together. I'm sorry, Harry. It means an extra mouth to feed, extra bunk on the train. Rennie ain't no harmonica player. He plays the piano, and he composes, too. He's real good, Mr. Bates, and he'll earn his keep on us. Yeah. I'm sure that your brother is another Chopin of bonus. But for now, you think maybe there's some place we could send him, like, uh, home. Uh-uh. You want to dance, don't you, boy? Yes, sir. I want anything. Well, let's look at you. You dirty. Steal to eat. Got about as much prospects as a three-legged dog. I'm the greatest thing happened to you since mother's milk, boy. Now. You want to join up with me or no? No, that my brother. Folks out there can't tell a nigga without it. Oh, hush up. Ready? Come on, put it on. Oh, for God's sake, Harry. You insisted he come along, now you deal with this kid. Ready? Damn. You think I enjoy putting this stuff on my face, huh? Well, hell, where else can us colored folks perform, huh? You want to go back to the streets? I made up my mind, Harry. I'm going back home. You're up, Mr. Bates. Ready? Ready, you can't leave now. I mean, look, just when it's getting good, this is what we stay for. I can't do this kind of work anymore, Harry. I thought I could, but I can't. Boy's right, Harry. He'll be fine. He'll be just fine. Here. <clears throat> look, I'll tell you what. Is uh, the train fair? The traveling money. Come on, Harry. Yeah, look, uh, just wait till after the show here. We'll talk about it. <laughs> we'll stay in touch, Harry. No matter what happens, we stay in touch. Come on, Mr. Bones. Uh, Rennie, please. 
Just wait till after the show, here. Yeah? Harry! I'm coming. I 
I've never seen my darling Nelly home. I'll be sitting by the river and I'm weeping all the day. Far away from my old Kentucky home. Officer, could you uh, tell me what's going on here? Been repossessed, that's what's happened. Cars, costumes, props, old toot and scramble. That can't be. The company wasn't doing that bad. <laughs> Ain't nobody doing good except undertakers. There's a depression on, boy. Ain't you heard? Albert. Where's Mr. Anderson? Have you seen him around? Sure did. Took off about 15 minutes before the sheriff got here. You mean he just took off? Got up, made a little speech about how hard he didn't try it and how sorry he was the company had to go bust. And he was gone. Charlie. Where's Charlie Bates? He took off, too. What are you going to do now, Harry? Well, you folks can wait around here for the Lord or some pale-faced manager to deliver you if you want to, but not me. Suppose you're running that Charlie Bates again? If I do, he'll be the one that needs the Lord's deliverance. Don't get my meaning, son. This ain't no nigger truth. Once I get the caulk on and, and the makeup, nobody be able to tell me from the rest of the company. Look, look, if it's colored materials you're looking for, why, it's a genuine article. <laughs> Boy, white men been doing coon shows longer than niggers by 20 years. We're experts at it. So why should I hire a black man to do a job a white man can do? Answer me that. Say, fella, you looking for a job? Yes, sir. 
see you've been in show business. Yes. Well, maybe I could use you. Just ten cents, ladies and gentlemen, one thin dime to gaze upon this genuine Zulu warrior captured in the heart of darkest Africa and brought to you at enormous expense by the management. Hey, hey, Brown! Only one thin dime. You overacting tonight, ain't you? Get back in your cage, or you fired. Must have left the cage unlocked. Everything's gonna be fine. Go ahead. Take a look. Enjoy yourself. Just ten cents, ladies and gentlemen. One thin dime. The gaze upon this genuine Zulu warrior. It's captured in the heart of darkness. I understand Africa. how you might <clears throat> uh, be a bit peevish with me, but I'll get out of here, Charlie. I need this job. Listen, I done went to a lot of trouble to find you. I tracked you over three states. And I just only want to talk to you. Listen, I just want to explain all that. I tell you what, meet me after you're done here. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, I'd be glad to meet you, yeah? Harry, now ain't no black company ever been asked to play that theater till now. And you've got to be impressed by that. I suppose you, you ask yourself how that come by, let a commitment from Oliver Turpin. Well, it was easy. Harry, I promised him the finest acts, the greatest, most spectacular missile show ever assembled. Now, you old grifter, you got yourself a snake by the tail. You done conned yourself into the chance of a lifetime and ain't got a gnat's notion what to do next, except to come get me to help you put it all together. Then you gonna do it, right? Wrong. Harry, please. Oh, Harry. Oh, yeah. Harry, please. I love you, Charlie. Lord knows why. But I wouldn't trust you to carry corn to a blind chicken. And furthermore, I ain't going into business with you ever again. All right. Forget about me. Forget I saved your life. Forget, forget you as a skinny, starving kid when I plucked you out of that shack. I forget about that long ago, Charlie. Listen, Harry, think of what you're passing over. It's what you always dreamed of. Your own troop, Harry. A chance to be somebody. Or would you rather spend the rest of your life playing Zulu cages? People throwing peanuts at you. At least at the end of the evening, I know I got peanuts to eat. What you ain't no telling, is there, Charlie? But you'd be a partner. I done told you that. Listen, I'm willing to give you, well, 40% of the operation. All right, equal partners, Harry. 51%. And the answer's still no. Hey, are you squeezing me? Just in case I was interested, of which I'm not. How many railroad cars you got lined up? Cars? Mm -hmm. Me? No. Well, I'm, I'm... I 
figured the senior partner would take care of <laughs> <laughs> Gotta admit, Harry Brown, you sure did box that real car each. Well, now all we gotta do is worry about those cars got wheels on them or not. What we gotta worry about is putting a company together. I've been thinking about that too, Charlie. Anderson's old company. But half those troopers got to still be camped down there where we left them. Nah, you don't want to go back there, Harry. I mean, those folks just might not understand that I had good reason for leaving in such a hurry. You turn your mouth off a minute and listen to what? Just listen. It's nice, nice. That's got to be the voice of a black angel. Probably got a face like Satan's great grandmama, too. spiritual uplifting. Let's hit the grip. Got to have her, Charlie. Got to have that girl in our company. Woman in a minstrel show, what's she gonna do? Play the bone? No, sir, she'll, uh, she'll sing. In the oleo. You ain't fooling me. Or the Lord, Harry Brown. about me going off with a minstrel show, Mr. Brown. But uh, maybe when I tell her how you a big, famous minstrel star and all, but she... Best be going, Harry. Mr. Brown been telling me how y'all heading north to Chicago. <laughs> and I ain't never seen nothing north of this very town. Oh, sugar. Now, don't you agree, Mr. Bates, that it'd be a crime and a sin against the Lord to leave a magnificent voice like Jessamine's undiscovered? Oh, Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. You don't come with me now, Mr. Brown. I'm gonna have to scuff your dancing slippers. Now, in case you are interested, Miss Tucker, the company cars will be leaving from the rail yard at four o'clock this afternoon. At four. Good day, ma'am. Good day. <laughs> Chuckle-headed Harry, what other crazy notions you got in mind? Well, the company's gonna need a good piano player. What? If you mean that brother of yours, listen, Harry, don't you start up with me. Boy, when he said he didn't have nothing fancy, he wasn't overstating, was he? Hell, Charlie, we lucky to have anything at all. Yeah. Well, might as well get aboard. Jessamine, but you see, us show folks, we travel kind of light. It's a tradition. 
so you won't be needing all that. Oh, but I do need it, Mr. Brown. It don't go, I don't go. Kelly, give me a hand with this trunk. Yes, sir, Mr. Brown. Uh, oh, and one other thing, Mr. Brown. I will be needing a compartment of my very own. Well, Miss Tucker, you have exactly that. We wouldn't dream of compromising your privacy. Would we, Mr. Bates? No, sir, Mr. Brown. something for you. Oh, uh, I'll be right there. You should tell a girl when you come and visit her. Uh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, it's sort of a show business tradition, don't you know, when a new star joins the company. Oh. Celebrate with a little, uh, a little, uh, you know, if you hadn't come along, I probably would have had to ride this to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, really, I have this nephew in Chicago, and my mama told me to be sure and take something to him, because we... Don't you, Mr. I'm coming out. What is this? What does it look like, a bold weevil? I mean, I mean, whose is it? I... You didn't say nothing about bringing no kid along. And you didn't say you were looking for a bed warmer to Chicago, neither. So I guess that just about breaks us even, don't it? Bunch and he won't hire us to take gum off the seat. I'm glad you said it, Charlie. Because now you agree with me about what this company needs. What's that? My brother, Rennie. All of a sudden, they don't sound that bad to me here. I know you said he growed into a first-rate musician. But damn it, Harry, you know he ain't gonna be nothing but a bunch of trouble for both of us. Well, in trouble, you's a boning. I told the engineer to unhook us at the Louisiana spur. Louisiana? Yeah, 
the last letter I got from Rennie. He said he was headed back to New Orleans. Give this bunch some time. They'll shape up. Charlie, it's the sound of them. Now, without Rennie, we got nothing but another oompa minstrel band. Harry, please. Charlie, I want my brother with me. to have something of my own. A chance to go and back to playing the nigga is all, Harry. Well, no, thank you. I'm not going with you. You'd rather spend the rest of your life like some eyeless pimp in a juke house, huh? <laughs> well, Harry, now that's the way you see it. But it suits me just fine. I got a fair piano. Folks who uh, like to hear me play. And uh, the company of a few agreeable ladies when I feel inclined. A little pin yet when the world starts crowding in, huh? Who told you about that? I've heard. Tell me you still smoking the old Now and again. The composition you was playing when I come in, is that your own? Did you write it down? You write any of your compositions down. Just gonna take it to the grave with you, huh, Rennie? Come on, Harry, I want you to hear something, okay? some of my stuff for a bunch of them piano rolls. So? Well, you got paid. My music, Harry. Playing in Lily White clubs all over the country, and nobody knows who's playing it or who even wrote it. Stand back, sunshine. My alligator's about to shed a tear. Now, you save that for your coon show, Harry. You got to stop pardoning yourself, Rennie. I know it's rough out here. We all got to crawfish every now and then. And why even bother to come out? Because you got the right to be heard. And not by just 30, 40 folks crowded in some notch house parlor. What's that sound? Well, then why don't you just go in there and tell them that? OK. OK, I will.
I'm not going with you, Harry. I heard you, little brother, but I can't let you stay here and get shot either, can I? Mama wouldn't look kindly on I told you working in them kind of places is going to ruin your health, boy. Days. What I said to you, I had no right. No matter. Well, seeing as how this is kind of a historical moment, Jessamine, there's nobody here but me and you to, to witness it. I'd kind of like to see your face when I tell it to you. I apologize. What's so historical about that? I never apologized to a woman before. Well, I'm sure the world will little note nor long remember. What? What? Sugar, come here for a minute. Come on up here. so quiet tonight, Mr. Bones. Just thinking. But how are you going to meet the payment to the rail car company? You know, it's Bones someplace along here. On a minstrel train? Mm hmm Hey, you from Michigan, right? Mm hmm You know, I once asked my mama where I was from. She said, she said, well, son, your eyebrows is from Knoxville and your ankles is from uh, Quentin. And the rest of you is from someplace in between. <laughs> I don't believe you. It's true. <laughs> yeah, we never stayed in one place long enough to have a house or a dog. <laughs> yeah, I always want a dog. Harriet, I'd kind of like to apologize, too. I wouldn't trade it, though. It's life. Mm -mm. You stay in one place too long. Roots start growing out your feet. People start pouring water all over your head. Look, I know you're worried about the, the small houses in Chicago. Whoa, 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 sugar. I'm the end man. I tell all the funny stories, remember? It don't hurt to let somebody in when you got troubles. It ain't gonna make you less of a man to share it with me. I can handle it. Just grab it by the neck. Give it a twist. How come you feel like you got to grab at everything in life, Harry? Because huh? I learned when I was a kid, but my papa didn't know the day he died. You don't grab, you don't get. Sometimes if you just, just ease up, what you want just comes rubbing up against you like a cat. It ain't happened yet, baby. this way. Sweet. Easy. Yeah. 
Yeah, you say that now. Cats and spickled creatures, you know, they wander into your life and they wander on out. I ain't going nowhere, Harry Brown. Not Okay, now, Larry, don't slide around too much. And Tony, I need you to get rid of those oompa oompas. That's what we're trying to get away from, okay? Now, let's try one more time, gentlemen. This time with a lot of fervor, okay? Whoa, Here we go. Whoa, one. whoa, whoa, whoa. Really? <laughs> These people ain't used to play in the sun up. I think we ought to turn them loose. Well, never thought about that. Well, you gentlemen seem to have the onions. That'll be fine. Hey, Hawkins, you get some rest after this first day. Was I right? It's gonna be one sensational show now. My little brother's taking over the music. Well, now don't you go start drinking that snake oil now, Harry, because as soon as this crate slows down to jumping speed, I'm gonna be headed back to New Orleans. What you don't understand, Vinnie, really, is the business has changed since Papa was in it. It's changing all the time. Oh. Oh, you mean you give up telling them warm and funny stories about the good old days on the old plantation? <sighs> ain't no point in trying to shut you, Vinnie. Really. Just ain't changed all that much. I figured. As a day coach out of Baton Rouge, it'll get you back in New Orleans before the saloons open up. But it ain't got to be that way. Now, I've been thinking about it for some time now. We're going to rebuild a whole show around your music. Now, wait a minute, Harry. Don't go making a whole bunch of promises. You button up, Charlie, and listen. No more blacking up. No more painting on big white lips. No more coon songs or racist jokes. I think the audience is ready for something else. See, if I'm your partner, <clears throat> How come this is the first I heard of it? First, first thing we get rid of these chairs. Yeah. Instead, we open with the Brown and Bass Symphony and marching band playing the new minstrel rag, huh? Now, wait, Harry. I don't believe I know that number. <laughs> of course not, Jazz, bro. You ain't wrote it yet. <laughs> A special composition for the occasion. And while you're at it, I want you to compose a little something for Jessamine, too. Yeah? What about the axe, Harry? Now, it's gonna be axe, don't you worry. Just the best of the old time mistress. Just the music and, and the dancing and, and the variety of turns. That ain't what Oliver Turpin is expecting, Harry. And that man is gonna be looking for an old-fashioned minstrel show with stomp speeches and smart talking clog dances and oh, damn it, Charlie! You promised the man something new and spectacular. And just as we got a chance to bring it to him, and you won't wanna... take him a show like that to towns like like Memphis and Cairo? Tear our limits out. Come in, come in. Come in, let me talk. Ready? And you listen to me. You sign on and I'll fire bones and tangle, I promise. You, yeah, you better come on. Gonna do it? Stay on? Mm hmm. Well, do you think I should? It's what Harry wants. Seems pretty important to you what Harry wants. Well, now don't worry about it. I love him too. And I know his faults. I care what you want too. <laughs> hey, come off, sis. You don't even know me. Rennie, I heard you play. I know you. Is it gonna stay? Now, what makes you think he'd tell me? 
sugar a miser would tell you where he buried his gold. Go away from here, Harry Brown. What is it? Harry, do you want Rennie to stay for him or for you? Do you really believe I'd let my brother die of opium poisoning in some Louisiana crib joint if I could do something about it? He trusts you. He really thinks you're going to do something worthwhile this time. For God's sake, don't disappoint him. He's going to stay. Yeah. That's good. Okay, Hawkins, now let me hear you cornet really sing out strong on that, really sharp. Dun dun bum, dun dun dun. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Okay, good, good. Okay, now why don't you join him on this guy? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Huh. Good, guys. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go from the top now. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Huh. We play towns all along the line. Performing in barns and churches okay, okay, when we had to. Always trying to make the show better, sharpening the act. That day in Chicago was getting closer and closer. Fine, fine. And that's what we need to get, okay? And we need that. Okay, now let's try it from the top. Everybody this time. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Think they're ready? Well, like another 10 days to work with them, but hell, let's find out. Charlie B. That's you. Five cents? Where's the owner of your company, Charlie? You looking at him? Finally got a show of your own. My partner, Harry Brown. Tell you what, Charlie. I need a lead cornet player. You fellas got one you want to sell off? 
Lord, no. We're doing so well, we're looking to hire on, not sell off. Then maybe I got something you won't buy. Afraid not to buy it. Here's me, you ain't told him but a heap of trash today. <laughs> we'll see, Charlie. We'll see. I didn't say it. You make it true. Charlie. And back. He's so fat, he can't even walk. How you gonna get up there and dance? Hey, come on up here. Get out the way before he smashes you. <laughs> you best to get. Well, come on up here and dance. Well, come on up here. Stand back in the dance room.
and you could join up with the brown bits. I wonder, could I see you and Mr. Brown for a moment? Damn clever, I must say, using that New Orleans whorehouse music for a minstrel band. How you do that? Well, it's double time syncopated, four, four, over two, four, mostly, with the melody running ahead or behind. Ragtime is what it is. Interesting. Most interesting. So to get right to the point here, I'll buy you boys out for, say, 3000 cash. Well, yeah, don't think so, Mr. Finch, but thanks anyway. Now, you know what happens to black-owned companies. They either get squeezed out or starved out. Yeah, I suppose you're right. But I reckon we'll give it a run. I'll make it 4500 and 3% of the gross receipts. Uh-uh. You damn fools, you don't even know what you've got there. What do you say now, Charlie Bates? I did not tell you my little brother was going to change the whole face of minstrelsy. Well, I got to admit, if Tobias Finch wants to buy us off at 4500 we worth 10 times that. Come on, come on. Hey, what's that? Uh, I want you to meet our new act, the Sultan's harem dancers. <laughs> what is it? Well, partner, while you were busy pirating away to buy Finch's harem girls, Mr. Finch was busy making off with our second horn player, three of our dancers, and the cook. <laughs> Trippin' body snatcher! Stop it! Stop this trick! Damn it! Back it up! <laughs> what you let me? Up, Mr. Brown? Where's the funny-looking costumes? Now, we're doing a, a little different kind of show tonight, a little more high tone. You'll like it. Times are bad, Mr. Brown. There's lots of those folks out there barely have the price of admission. And they don't want to come in here and see a lot of niggers being better and smarter than they are. But don't you worry. We're going to make them happy. You better. Hear that whistle, just stand back. Ragtime special coming down the track. Nothing but sunshine on this hip train. Smoke stack puffing out the same refrain. Glory, hallelujah, they carry on. Serenade from the dust 
Chairs on stage. Everybody in the makeup. Ready? Start them on Camp Town races. Alvin, get the band on Camp Town races. Right.
in your wife, Mr. Bones. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, it's time for a song. Uh, um, I wonder would you favor us, Mr. Bones? I'll be honest. I have a riddle for you, Mr. Interlocutor. Uh, uh, what is your riddle, Mr. Bill? Do you know why there are no white folks in the audience? Well, no, I, uh... Because they all have red necks! <laughs> Hell, are you trying to get all killed? How long are you gonna take it, Harry? How long are you gonna go through this humiliation and abuse? When are you gonna stop fighting back? Not when there's more than 200 drunken yahoos out there just waiting to shoot my black butt off! about any brothers. Just know you better get on your train and ride on out of here. Yes. And take care you don't come back this way again. Yes. Yes. Thank you. 
I just left Rennie really where he was to be alive now. That's what you're thinking, ain't it? That's what I'm thinking. I didn't tell him to go up there on that stage with white face. <laughs> I didn't tell him to go get himself lynched. Uh, for what? What he proved, huh? I tell you what my brother proved, nothing, because that's what he died for, nothing. Why couldn't he learn that the important thing is to stay alive? Maybe because for Rennie, there are more important things than survival, more important than ambition. Dignity. That's what your brother died for, dignity. And the sad part about it is you don't even understand. I understand. Back there was no place to take it on, that's all. I mean, it just wasn't the right time. And when is the right time, huh? When is your time, Harry? <laughs> Chairs on the stage, Mr. Turpin. Well, I'm sorry you felt the need to ask that, Mr. Brown, but uh, since you have, let me make this very clear. I heard what happened over in Cairo. It's not going to happen here. I'm not going to have my theater torn apart. I don't think you have to worry about that, Mr. Turpin. Oh, I'm not worried. You're going to give me an old-fashioned minstrel show with makeup, costumes and bones and tambo. And if you don't care to do that... Well, that's exactly what you're gonna get, uh, Mr. Turpin. Good. Come. Let me show you around. We've worked hard, Harry. You're gonna throw it away all for a... For a gesture? Tell me something here. Do you really want to spend the rest of your life in some lousy railroad car? You better come to the party. Gonna be black enough for this. One. Is that true, Harry? Harry?
was at the Battle of Bull Run. He was one of the ones who run.
It looked like we filled the house without Mr. Bones and Tambo. I told you what I wanted. I don't care if you sold out for a year. Don't bother coming back tomorrow. Well, don't much matter, Mr. Turpin. And if we back on that train again tomorrow, well, that's OK, too. Because this is one night can't nobody take away from us. Viacom, 